Alright guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to make a start on our custom made edge chipping, edge damage tool thing. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. The first thing I want to do before we do this is let's not forget to put down a labs delete small parts. Okay, and this is going to do exactly what it says it's going to do in that it's going to selectively remove chunks of brick based on a threshold parameter. So that's kind of useful for building again, another layer of sort of noise and interest on, on the asset. So we will color that yellow as we will promote that to be a parameter. And we'll just set that back down to zero. Now, our next task, what we're going to do is going to be quite intensive. You know, we're asking Houdini to do a lot of calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way back up to the top of my network. And I'm just going to drop the size of the wall just a little bit. Uh, so the width I'm going to drop to three and the brick rows maybe just drop that a little bit as well and the height maybe down to two just so we've got fewer things that need processing um obviously when you come in to use your final asset you don't mind about letting it cook for you know a couple of minutes but when you're building and you're doing scene layout and things you want these things to be responsive so that's why we added in that build mode toggle on the uh, on the digital asset so we can work on this sort of low polygon version when we're setting out our scene and when we're ready to render we can just turn off build mode and Houdini will do those calculations and then we can you know we can output the result to disk or to USD or whatever our pipeline is okay so let's get started and the technique is, is actually um, based on an existing node okay so it's called labs edge damage okay and this does exactly the same thing um i'd recommend giving it a try i think it might just be me but i think this is a quite a slow node to process uh and if you dive inside this edge damage node you can see it's very very complex uh, we can roll our own kind of version of this that does pretty much the same thing maybe not as many kind of fancy parameters on it but i think it's a good exercise in learning how to build uh, this kind of um, tool. Um, so try both, definitely try both. Give this one a try uh, and see if you can notice any sort of difference in speed between the one that we're going to do. So let's jump in for each connected piece. We've seen this node network before. This is going to enable us to operate on bricks at a time. Okay, so if we jump inside that for each network, we can see we're just working on a single brick, okay? So what we want to do is we want to generate some noise on this brick and then selectively chip away at the edges to uh, to create that sort of edged wear, old sort of damaged look. So the first thing we need to do is give ourselves some more geometry. So I'm going to put down a remesh node and remesh this brick. If I press Shift W, you can see the wireframe. So that's giving us some sort of neat triangles. Too big, we need more. So let's come down to the target length parameter I'm going to drop that to 0 0.3. Okay, so we've got something like that. All right. And what we want to do now is we want to generate um, generate a mask, essentially. We want this damage to appear only on the corners and the edges. So let's use a measure curvature node to get that information. Okay. And what we're interested in is this red section here, which is the convexity. And if we scrub the intensity slider, you can see how that is affecting our geometry. It's just outputting that convexity uh, attribute. And we can sort of dial in these parameters a little bit. We can maybe do something like this. So what, what I'm looking at here is creating a mask for these points. The points in red, I'm going to be applying noise and doing processing to. Um, so these are the ones that we're interested in. We don't want it to really sort of uniformly mess up this section of the bricks. We want that to remain quite, well, brick shaped essentially. So we're just going to use this as a mask. So with that, we can then jump into a group node. Okay, and change some parameters on this. We want to put those points that have got a value of convexity into a point group. So the group type is going to be points. The group name is going to be edge noise, I guess works. And in the base group field here, we can reference that convexity attribute. So if we jump to our geometry spreadsheet, 
we can see we've got this convexity attribute here ranging from very very tiny numbers all the way up to one okay so if we say something like at convexity say greater than i don't know 0 0.7 And come back there we go for some reason it doesn't like spaces in this field but uh, there you go so yeah convexity greater than 0.7 you can see is given as a point group just containing those edge points there all right so with that group in hand what we can do is drop that into a mountain sop okay now mountain sop is just noise essentially um, and in the group field, we can specify our edge noise mask, all right? And there you go. You can see we're starting to get some noise just on those points we've selected. Okay, so in the mountain node, um, we want it to be zero centered. And then we can sort of really dial down the amplitude. That's a bit wild. So we just want quite a subtle effect and the element size as well. We can sort of dial that down a little bit of get something a bit more jaggedy kind of looking let's give that a try so this is looking really weird what are we going to do with this now what we are going to do is use a boolean intersect node take our original brick at the start of the for each loop and then plug in our noisy version And we get something like this when it's just all those ugly colors so to get rid of those colors let's go up to measure curvature and turn off export color there we go okay so that's a bit better we can sort of see how that is now just starting to chip away at the uh, at the surface of that but we can sort of push that a little bit further so let's put down a smooth node okay and we want to put the smooth node after we've generated the curvature information but before we go into the group so let's just smooth the position so you can see how that is softening those positions we can also soften the normals as well so we'll put n for normal in there and then come back down okay and the effect is a bit too extreme so what we want to do is we want to blend it out if you like to get something that's kind of a bit more um a bit more subtle so we'll put down a peak sop Okay, and peak will allow us to push the geometry out along its normal so we get something like that okay and now our cutting surface if we go back to our boolean you can see we're starting to get something that's a little bit more selective on just the edges okay so the parameters um, need a bit of work dialing in so let's go back to this mountain node the amplitude is far 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 too high I'm just going to drop that a little bit so we can get something a bit more kind of sensible. So I've got mine on 0 0.032. And there you can see we're starting to get some sort of interesting selective edge wear. This whole section of noise tools here, we can promote that up to the digital asset so the end user can, can really tweak and drive what type of noise they want. Okay, one final thing I want to do in this is for every brick I want to offset the noise pattern so we don't get any obvious repeating so that's another good use of that detail attribute on the um, meta import node so I'm going to select my for each create meta import node just to make my life easier I'm going to rename it iter for iteration and then in the mountain node in the offset parameter you can see how that works I just want to drive that with that detail expression detail point it to that iter node that we've just made reference the iteration attribute index zero okay cool so with this little system set up we can then plug that into the output of our for each loop and let houdini do its thing like i said it's going to go away and it's going to calculate and there you can see we're starting to get some sort of damage and chips on our uh, on our brick wall probably push that a little bit further so what i'd recommend is um play around with the settings get used to what they do um 
sort of the global control will be this peak node, if you like. This will dictate how much of that effect is going to be visible. So if you want quite a lot of the effect, what I'd recommend is coming to this peak node and just dropping that value a little bit and you'll start to get more wear. Okay, there you can see starting to get more of a pronounced effect. Or, you know, you could come back and modify the element size on the noise again. So there's tons and tons of tweaking possibilities um, for this system. Um, so let's just put the display flag on here. And then you can see we've got a bit more of a, a pronounced effect there. So that's kind of up to you and, and the type of look that you're going for. Um, so, like I said, we'll leave that there. Very, very simple approach to that problem. What I would recommend is just try the labs edge damage node and just see if you notice a difference in speed um, or you know dive inside and see what nodes they're using it but I thought this was a really simple way to generate that edge damage effect and it works on lots of different assets as well not just bricks cool so with that what we're going to do in the next video is assign some UV coordinates to this to these bricks um, fix the colors of that edge chipping bit that we've just made and start making our uh, brick wall asset uh, shader friendly if we've got to apply some texture maps. So we'll do that in the next video. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And hopefully I'll see you then.